I'm interested in learning about what education was like in St. Albert. What did your classroom look like? Well, the classrooms uh, looked not appreciably different from what they are today. I mean, we had a space like we have, like we're sitting in now, and uh, we would have rows of desks and the students would sit in their desks and that would generally be the, uh, the space. There was very little moving around. Um, uh, if with permission, students would go to, and I emphasize with permission, students would be able to go and speak to another student, but other than that, they would sit in their desk and do their work. Approximately how many people were in one classroom? Well, in my very first um, uh, uh, single grade classroom, I had 38 grade 8 students. After that, it varied. Uh, it went as low as perhaps uh, 25 or 22, and then somewhere in the, in the low 30s. But uh, that 38 was the highest number I ever had. Was there more than one grade level in the same room? For me, yes. In my very first uh, assignment, I was in Alcombdale, which is northwest of St. Albert, and I had grades 7, 8, and 9 in one classroom. Now that was a challenge, but it, it was all right. How would you manage to keep everyone on task? In the multiple grade classroom, it was actually quite simple. Uh, I would go to the grade sevens first thing in the morning and give them an assignment and do that very quickly and then go to grade eights and, and give them an assignment, something that they could work on on their own and do that very quickly. Then I would teach the grade nines a lesson. Uh, that would take some time, perhaps 15 or 20 minutes. And then I would give them an assignment, get back to grade sevens teach them a lesson, give them an assignment, and go on to grade eight. And that was my day, and it was actually quite busy. If a student disobeyed the rules, what were the consequences? Well, interesting, uh, um, Danielle, probably not a whole lot different from what it is today. I mean, they would lose privileges. Um, the privilege that probably hurt the most is loss of recess, uh, including the loss of, of, the, of the play period at, at noon hour. Uh, students who lived in town uh, would generally walk to school and so they could be kept in after school as well. I hear that they used to use the strap. Why was that an acceptable punishment? Well, the strap certainly was available in the school and it was used on occasion and I, and I have to emphasize on occasion. Um, it was not a regular form of the discipline, but the, um, the threat, if I may use the word, was always there. Students always knew that if, if things got out of hand too badly, that the strap would have been a consequence and it was why was it used it was a societal thing it was actually a, a, an accepted uh, form of, of um, dealing with misbehavior in children um, quite often uh, uh, students who misbehaved at home would be spanked and so the strap was an, expen an extension of, of spanking was education important to society in general society in general we're beginning to um, understand the values of an education however Many individual students, uh, individual young people, as they do today, have a mind of their own, and uh, they would decide to simply leave school and, and get a job, and uh, that was life. Today I have with me Mr. Philip Sturgis. He arrived in Canada on May 12, 1949, and he was 20 years old. He has lived with his family in St. Albert since 1967. You grew up during the Second World War in Britain. Tell me about those years. Well, I was 11 when the war started in uh, September the 3rd, 1939. We lived not too far away from a fighter station, and that was where the bombing first started over there. The rest of the time we moved around quite a bit. I was a uh, myself and my brother were evacuated to uh, the centre of Great Britain, the Calic Chase, it was a country village. Um, and by, uh, shortly after we'd been there about three months, my father came and got us and my mother had suggested that perhaps if we were going to die, we might as well die as a family. So uh, we moved around quite a bit and we really didn't much, didn't happen to us. We were very fortunate and lucky. We did have one night where the whole area was inundated with uh, incendiary bombs, which meant they go on fire when they um, hit the ground. Uh, I remember looking out the window of the bedroom, and it looked like a big birthday cake outside. There was a school behind us, and, but we had to get very busy and put out the fires that were already burning in our house, so the place where we lived, which we were able to do very quickly. Uh, there was also rationing, lots of uh, uh, things like that, we had identical cards, we had to learn how to 
were gas masks. We had to have carried them with us at all times. Uh, if we were caught without them, we were fined. It was very strict. Uh, the security was very tight. Most nights there was air raids, so the sirens would go as soon as it, after it got dark, and the bombing and the shooting would go on all night. Actually, though we weren't directly affected, the much it certainly could keep us awake at times. Why do you think that it's important that young and old spend quality time together? Well, I, I think we can both learn different things from each other, you know. But the point is you're enjoying some time together and uh, different things come up. You have lots of things you can laugh about. When I'm playing a game, I'm really all concerned about the game. The game's everything. And I mean that from the point of view, it really doesn't matter who wins. But it, it's really a form of contact because you, you need to spend, interact to each other. I think you need a lot of, uh, of time like that. Um, and also, uh, it, it, it does establish memories and things that happened uh, on some of, like we have an annual, well, several times a year we have family get together. They're noisy, they're loud, uh, but they're full of laughter and fun. And I think these are the things as you get older that will come back to you. I can remember many Christmases being with older people and, uh, and other young people as well, where we share the time together. Uh, and those things come back more and more as the older I get. Uh, there's something that's worth thinking about.